I recently acquired the Lab Radar Chronograph System. It's a Doppler-based chronograph designed by a company called Infinition in Canada. So when I say Doppler radar, it pretty much means that it pushes out Doppler waves, Doppler radar waves out towards the target, and it tracks the bullet in flight as it, you know, travels. So it uses radar waves to detect distance and then calculates time and which gives you your velocities. This is much different from a traditional optical based system, which uses light sensors on the unit and the bullet has to pass over those sensors in order for it to detect or, or to, for it to calculate the, the bullet velocity. Anyway, I went ahead and I want to go ahead and uh, discuss the unit uh, since I recently acquired mine. Um, these units have been trickling out to U.S. consumers in the past several months. But a uh, quick side note: I do have an article reviewing this library unit on my blog at ocabj.net, so you should review. You should um, go through the article to get more in-depth information and photos that could supplement this video. But anyway, I went ahead and took off the battery door to expose the. Uh, the, where you put the batteries, and it's powered by six or six AA batteries. Um, but it's also powered by USB. Um, there's a USB port here, um, micro USB, which can be um, attached to a USB battery pack, which it needs a five volt, one amp power source. So pretty much any of these uh, battery packs you can buy for smartphones or tablets to charge those um, can be used as long as it can provide five volts at one amp. This old Anker unit that I have, I bought a couple years back. I used it to charge my iPad, and my tab, or my iPad, and my iPhone. It can push out up to two volts, I think, or three volts. But um, it's these are smart devices as far as it only provide enough power to the device as it's drawing. So the fact that it needs five amp, one volt, or five volts at one amp, it's safe to use most of these as long as they're decently made, quality, you know, decent quality made uh, USB power battery packs. Anyway, so there is that um, US, micro USB port here. Um, there's this SD card door which holds the SD card. And that's pretty much where it stores the data. So when you're shooting, um, when it's collecting data, it stores it all in the SD card. And if you don't have an SD card in here, it actually has internal memory, but it'll store it in, on internal memory, but you can't pull it off. It's, it's pretty much stuck on the lab radar. So you have to review it all on the menu system here, which I'll discuss later or in, in a few minutes here. But um, if, you, if you have an SD card, you pretty much um, shoot, store your data here, and then you can pull it out and then put it into your computer and pull the files off. They're all CSV files. If you look at my blog, I'll, I discuss the CSV file format. Um, as far as the unit's concerned, it's pretty much simple as far as the construction here. Um, got one unit. There's a standard tripod thread here. It's a quarter, 20, uh, what, quarter inch, 20 um, threaded which is the standard tripod thread. I have it on here on a uh, quick release plate, which is Arcus with compatible. And it's on this bench plate that I designed. Um, lab Radar makes their own bench mount plate that you can put the Lab Radar on for bench rest use. Theirs is 40 bucks. Mine, I put together for under 10, and that's when I repurposed the ball head. But you can make your own for probably 20 bucks, maybe even 30 if you want to splurge on a better ball head. But since I already had several tripods and I went and repurposed the ball head, I just bought a steel plate from a local steel shop for under $6 and then added some rubber feet and then the bolt that goes to my ball head and built for less than 10. So anyway, um, this is the unit itself and then we'll go ahead and walk through the system here. And when you press the on switch, or I have to provide power first, then turn on the on switch here to activate the lab radar. Once you get past the, the splash screen, which shows you the Lab Radar logo and the firmware information, it's going to drop you into a series mode. Before I discuss the series mode, there's a few things that you need to do when you out of the box. Um, you want to go to the settings by hitting the settings button, and it will um, drop you into preferences, rather. And then you'll have this menu where you're able to make changes. Like one of the first things I did was change my velocity units from meters per second to feet per second since meters per second it was default then um, distance units I went from uh, meters to yards from weight units I went from grains to oh, grams to grains the velocity ranges this is um, pretty much kind of a preset thing in the system where this is sort of a, a, a set of range uh, velocity ranges that the unit expects to see 
in that um, in how the setting is set. So I pick rifle because I'm shooting rifle. And if you read the manual, I'll discuss the ranges that this is uh, those apply to. Projectile offset. This is kind of important. Um, twelve inches. It default is twelve inches. I set minus six, but pretty much this means how far away is the bore line from the unit. So. I pretty much set minus six for bench rest use since my rifle runs right alongside the unit on the side. So I first set mine for six. Set distances. This is pretty much um, an internal type thing where it's going, the rate laborator uses these set distances as far as for kinetic energy and velocities over time. So it'll also, it will calculate your data based on um, muzzle velocity, but then it'll start taking data at 10 yards or 25, 33 yards, 50 yards, and 90 yards. So it takes it at five points, and I set these myself. Um, just a quick aside that depending on, for most rounds, actually, it's not going to reach out to 90. 30 cals probably won't be detectable up until about 50 yards. So after that, it's pretty much not going to see the, the bullet after 50 yards. That's just the uh, just a small um, deficiency in the radar system itself. Anyway, you can pre you can set those distances for whatever you want. Projectile weight. This is important if you're going to do power factor type calculations. So, and this is used for kinetic en energy because it calculates kinetic energy over distance. But um, I set mine to 175 because I was testing with 175 grain 30 cal bullets. But um, if you're doing like handgun loads for IPSEC or IDPA, it'll actually give you power factor information. So this arm time deal is just pretty much how long it's going to stay armed before it, it'll, um, if it doesn't detect any more shots, it'll just kind of shut off the radar, the radar wave, so it doesn't waste battery. So I'd set mine for 240 seconds since I'm powered off of a USB pack. <clears throat> the screensaver is pretty much 60 seconds. That's when, if ever I'm talking and it blanks out, it's because there's a screensaver for 60 seconds when it's like idle, it'll just turn off the LCD. The trigger source, this is pretty much what triggers the unit as far as when it should start tracking the bullet path. So trigger just means the internal microphone or there's just also this other external microphone uh, port here for peripherals, which I don't think Labrador's released yet. But then you can also do Doppler base, which is not used for uh, center fire, I don't recall. Then trigger level, this is pretty much the sensitivity. Um, I have mine right now set to two because actually, if you set it to one, which is which is the highest, it actually almost guarantees that it's always going to track correctly. If you're the only one on the range, if you're shooting next to people, you're probably going to have to dial that down to like two or even three. If there's other people on benches, you know, depending on how your range is designed, if they're in close proximity to you, their gun might trigger the lab radar unit to start reading or start tracking a bullet. Um, this is kind of. Uh, the frequency in which the radar will operate and I don't really mess with this if you need to you can but read the manual on that information and then transmission power right now I have mine set to standard and then system day system time and then factory reset those are self-explanatory anyway so I'm going to go and get out of preferences here and now we're back into to the series view or the series mode so Pretty much, you can see here that I have data already on my card. Um, the most recent series I shot, I, I can tell you right now, these were um, 175 grain Burger 30 cal OTM tacticals with 44.0 grains of Hodgdon Varget out of Lapua Brass with CCI BR2 primers. So anyway, this the lab radar is telling me on this series I have 20 shots fired. It gives me my average, which was 2747 feet per second. My high was 2760 feet per second, and my low was 2733 feet per second. Extreme spread was 28 with an 8.6 standard deviation. Pretty cool. Um, as far as the data, it's already calculated for you. I mean, granted, you can do this all by hand. I've always done it by hand um, whenever I read off my my old shooting crony optical base system. And and I always write down my data by on paper just out of habit. So... Um, I can do those on my own on these calculations, but it's just nice to have these reports already done for you and you can review them real time while you're at the range. So anyway, let's just say I'm at the range and I want to start a new series because I'm going to test like a new set of bullets or a new set of or a new set of ammo or cartridge or ammo that I loaded. 
I'm gonna go hit the series button, which asks me, do you wanna start a new series? I'm gonna go ahead and say yes. And now I'm gonna start a new series 13, no shots, right? That's the number of shots is zero. So now I wanna actually get into the armed mode. So I'm gonna hit the, um, this, uh, the armed button or the arm button, which here it's off screen right now, but it's pretty much where the blue light is at or above this blue light. And I'll go ahead and pan out for this real quick so you can see it. So I'm gonna go into arm mode. Now armed mode shows me, now it puts me into a, the mini system where I'm now ready to start receiving um, chronograph data. But it's technically arm, not armed yet. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is hit the arm button again and that turns the light orange. This means that the lab, the lab radar unit is actually putting out radar waves. And here it's gonna start receiving data once it starts tracking. So to get out of this though, I'm gonna go ahead in the arm mode or the arm button, which turns the light blue. And so this is, you're still in arm mode. And this is one of the quirks that I'm mentioning regarding reading the manual. When I was at the range, um, trying to use this without reading the manual, I was trying to start a new series after I fired my shots. I didn't wanna review my series, but I was trying to start a new series out in this in this mode and you can't do that you have to get out of armed mode even though the unit is not armed technically you're in armed mode so in order to get out of armed mode you need to hold down the arm button and it'll bounce you to the series mode now so now you're back in the series mode and if you need to all you need to do is just hit the series button and you can start a new series say yes and then you're going to hit the you're going to hit the armed mode button again to bounce you back to armed mode. So that's how you're pretty much gonna have to navigate to and from the different modes on the lab radar. Again, it's very intuitive to use except for that one little quirk that you kind of have to read the manual in order to understand that you need to hold down the armed mode while in, or hold, hold down the armed button while in armed mode to jump back to series mode. Anyway, while I'm in series mode, I'm gonna go ahead and discuss one little issue regarding the false positives that you might get with the unit. So again, this unit is triggered off of the sound of the shot. So when I looked at the preferences, I kind of, uh, sorry, preferences. When I looked, when I was walking through the preferences, I kind of showed you that one item as far as trigger level. So if there's other shooters on the line, which I tested on the Sunday morning at my shooting range's main range, the I had it on level one and there was the highest, most high sensitivity for the lab radar unit. And so there was only shooters like three benches away on both sides and actually one of them tr caused my lab radar to trigger such that it thought there was a bullet or a thought that I shot and it was waiting to track and it started tracking and it didn't receive a track because it wasn't, my uh, lab radar unit wasn't aligned with the bullet path. So it didn't read the data. And so therefore it just kind of threw an error. And there's one other time where it actually did get triggered and attract a bullet. So I got two false positives. I went ahead and just went in the system real quick, set down, dialed down my sensitivity, and that solved my problem and no one else triggered it. So if you're on a busy range and there's other people next to you, maybe on the benches to your left or immediate left or right, and they're shooting, let's say, a muzzle brake firearm, you may want to dial down your sensitivity to as much as three. Because as long as you're as long as your bore line is fairly close to the unit, like i I set mine to six you should be able to adjust your sensitivity such that no one else is gonna cause your lab radar to go off and uh, start tracking uh, their own bullets or whatever. Anyway, that's it as far as my lab radar is concerned. I really like it and the fact that I can go to the shooting range and use my chronograph any time of the day, particularly in the morning, which is when I had start, was having trouble with my own my old shooting crony optical base system. On my, firing li my, main firing li my main firing line at my shooting facility, it's uh, the way it's constructed is the sun travels from behind and creeps up over this hill. And so there's not enough sun early in the morning when I do go to the range to use an optical based system. So what happens is I'll often have to wait till about nine in the morning just to collect chronograph data because that's the only time when the light is starting to, to provide enough contrast for my optical sensors. But with the radar system, you don't have, you're not dependent on light conditions. So you can just collect data however you want. And I think this is the best way to go other, other than the magneto speed, which a lot of people like, and it was out long before the lab radar. But the magneto speed is a 
device that clamps onto the barrel. So that will affect POI, the point of impact. So it'll shift your POI because it's basically um, affecting barrel harmonics. So you can't shoot groups and collect data at the same time. It's nice to be able to shoot your group we will, and then it's a, while you're shooting your group, you're still collecting the velocity data from that from those shots. But unfortunately, with a magneto speed, you really can't do that because if you're collecting data, you have that magneto speed unit clamped on the barrel, your groups are going to be affected. So Labradar, the unit runs for five sixty retail, five hundred sixty dollars U.S. Unfortunately, that's that's expensive comparatively speaking to all other chronograph systems, except for the older 35P, which is arguably the best optical-based chronograph you're ever going to find, and it's highly regarded um, for the for many years. But ever since Labradar came out, I think this is going to change the game as far as um, as far as chronographs are concerned. So $560 US. Um, if you reload, I highly recommend getting a chronograph. And if you're going to get a chronograph, I highly recommend getting the lab radar. Anyway, again, I have a review of this posted on my blog at OCABJ.net. Um, I'll link to that in the video description. Definitely read that to get more information and more photos, particularly of my, of my, uh, my homemade bench mount that I made for the lab radar. Anyway, thanks for watching.